Welcome to another video in our video series, Demystifying 5G. In the recent videos, we talked about 5G in our coverage measurement, and I showed you um, demonstration and the hardware example, uh, plus how to uh, take these measurements, how to read these measurements. One thing that we didn't discuss in detail are the frequency settings. So what type of frequency I have to set to find these synchronization signal blocks and take these uh, signal quality measurements on them. Um, so in this video, we would explore the 5G in our frequency settings, and uh, we will learn that uh, there is quite some changes compared to LTE. So let's take a look. So what you basically see here is an example of a signal. Uh, let's assume we have a certain bandwidth, let's say um, 100 megahertz. So in LTE, we basically had the situation that around the carrier frequency, um, the synchronization signals, PSS, SSS, were transmitted. Uh, the broadcast channel was transmitted. So as soon as we knew the car actual carrier frequency of the LTE signal, we could find these um, signal components and identify the cell ID and find the master information block. Now with uh, 5G and R, that has changed. So basically what has changed is that everything is now based on what is called common resource blocks. Common resource blocks start typically uh, from a reference point. This reference point is called point A. And they are defined for fixed numerology, um, means subcarrier spacing. Uh, for the two frequency ranges, the common resource blocks are based on 15 kilohertz for FR1 and on 60 kilohertz for FR2. So that is something that we have to take into consideration. Now, the frequency point A can be understood as a kind of orientation, as a kind of pointer in the frequency domain for any frequency or location that's being um, assigned in 5G and R. Um, note that uh, these common resource blocks are not used directly for spectrum allocation. It uh, should be thought as a identifying of the frequency position due to the introduction of various numerologies, parameters, um, and so the resource block size, still defined by 12 subcarriers, is not constant anymore. So if we now think about uh, synchronization signal blocks, by definition they can take basically any position um, in the uh, frequency allocation of that signal. And uh, basically we have now to define that frequency position of the SSB based on that reference point, based on that point A. So typically, there is certain information being signaled to the device, for instance, the offset 2.A, since the synchronization signal blocks can actually utilize a different subcarrier spacing than the data and control channels. So for instance, in the millimeter wave uh, arena, in the FR2 frequency range, they could utilize 240 kilohertz for the synchronization signal blocks, but 120 kilohertz for the data and control channels. We need to define um, an additional offset from that common resource block, and that is the parameter KASB that you see basically here in uh, our graph um, um, that I mark here uh, for you. So um, if we now continue with that, we of course want to understand how now this type of information is being available, made available towards the, the device. So now we need to take a look at the two different deployment modes that are being defined for 5G and R, and we will learn that basically in non-standalone mode, uh, the particular uh, carrier frequency or frequency that these uh, synchronization signal blocks are transmitted at, um, I marked it here for you, which is basically subcarrier zero in the 10th uh, resource blocks that are forming the synchronization signal blocks. In a non-standalone mode, when we have an LTE carrier used as an anchor for exchanging control and signaling information with the 5G device, that information is be basically being sent towards the device. So the device receives a layer-free message with a so-called NRARFCN number that clearly identifies uh, this particular frequency. So a mobile will not sweep over spectrum trying to find it, it will exactly tune its receiver to that frequency and voila, it will acquire the synchronization signal blocks because part of that message is also its configuration. In standalone mode, so these, uh, the mode that uh, uh, purely is 5G only, um, these SSB uh, frequency definition basically uh, follows a different raster. We will basically have to learn what it means 
um, by uh, understanding the synchronization raster and the so-called global synchronization channel numbers. So let's take a look. So what you basically see here is first for non-standalone mode, the uh, NRARFCN, so the new radio absolute radio frequency channel number. There's a certain definition for that um, due to the different frequency ranges that uh, 5GNR supports. As you can see, there's a certain um, uh, raster being defined. However, if we take a look at that, um, that could change and is frequency band dependent, um, as we can see. And if you're following this particular uh, equation, then at the end of the day, you see that there's a certain numbering range for these different frequency ranges for uh, an NRARFCN. That, again, is the number that's being signaled to the mobile uh, to find, as an example, the SSB frequency position. Now, differently, the global channel, uh, global synchronization channel numbers are defined. So let's take also a look on, on this definition. Um, it's a different uh, table here um, with a certain um, uh, definition in terms of um, the raster, as you can see here. Different factors are go in, again, um, uh, similar than NRARFCN, covering these uh, three frequency ranges here, providing a different number set. And what you can already see, that um, the actual carrier raster is much more granular than the actual synchronization raster. So this is a compromise, a trade-off that has been added into the standard so that the mobile, if it would have to sweep the spectrum, which is it has to do in standalone mode, um, uh, doesn't waste too much time to find these synchronization signals. So in standalone mode, basically SSBs are following the synchronization raster and a much uh, wider granularity uh, than actually uh, it's possible with non-standalone mode. So I have also an example for you that I would like to take a look at. So uh, here take the example for um, frequency range 1. So we are in the sub 6 gigahertz space. I picked a band 78, which is basically 3.5 gigahertz. And now you can uh, see here also um, when we calculate these different um, NR ARFCN numbers uh, that are possible using uh, the correct equation and um, um, offset, then we see that some of these numbers, yeah, for instance, um, this particular one here, some of the NR, ARFCN, actually correspond to a global synchronization channel number. Yeah? So that's a piece in the standard that we have to understand. But again, uh, global synchronization channel numbers have a much wider granularity than the actual uh, channel raster that's de being defined with NR, ARFCN, as we show here on our example. So I hope this uh, information gave you a little bit more insights about in, into the frequency settings in 5GNR. Um, it can be confusing, so especially if you have to uh, uh, go out into the field and uh, try to measure coverage of your newly deployed F, uh, 5GNR uh, network in order to optimize it. So for, uh, to help with this task, Roden Schwarz has developed um, a new feature for um, 5GNR frequency settings. We call it automatic channel detection. Um, it's actually pretty simple uh, what it does, but this is a topic for another video in our video series, Demystifying 5G.